Hey and welcome to my new tutorial. Today we create some cool looking rain effect here in Maya with Redshift. But before we start, a few little words about. So here the case is not really physically accurate. So if a raindrop hits the surface, it will bump away and deform. So here you can see all the little dots are perfect spheres. This will work for a bit more wider shots, but too close it will not look that correct. So here you can see it, it looks cool, but not really believable. But for for the purpose of tutorial, I thought why not do a bit a closer shot. Okay, so let's dive in and have a look how to create this effect. Here I have the scene. Let's delete it. We also can delete this one here, as well this and this. That's just a simple scene with a few lights in it, the HDR and cameras and some assets from the Quixel Megascan library. To start, we need to go into the FX section here on the left corner. Just put in the FX, go to N particles and create an emitter. Here on the right side, you can choose what type of emitter you want. I prefer to use the volume because if some raindrops are falling out of a, of a cloud, they, they will start not just right. So, okay, no, they, they start on the, on the end of the cloud, but they are falling in a different, different speed or whatever. So for me, or in my mind, it's more logical to create a volume instead of just a surface, but I think it will also work very well with a surface. So let's scale it a bit bigger, put it up a bit and we can hit play Ooh, and it rains it's a raining man Hello. okay no i don't want to to hurt you with my with my voice uh, singing okay so we need to clamp this a bit in the lifetime so let's have a look where this is particle shape lifespan and not live forever it will kill your computer let's do a random range Let's create something, maybe four. Let's check it, how long they will live. And this looks pretty nice, but it looks more like snow. We can do here under, where is it? Shading, not points. Let's do some streaks. And here we have some streaks. We want more of this. Let's go for 4,000. Go back, play again. And here is our rain. Something that you need to keep in mind is the scale of your scene. So Maya works in centimeters. So one, one unit is one centimeter. <coughs> Sorry. You need to keep that in mind because that's very, um, sorry, it's, it's it's very important for some FX simulation stuff. And don't don't go and change the the gravity of your FX um, emitter or something other. Just work in the right scale, and you will be fine. Okay, so this looks cool, but it's not colliding with our objects. That's easy to fix. I have here the group of the mushrooms and go to Ncloth and create a passive collider. Now they are colliding. Hopefully, so we will see. Hit play. And they are colliding. You look at this. Woo. We can stop it here. So no need to collide with the background or maybe in your scene you also want to let it collide with your other objects, but here in the scene it's okay, just the mushrooms. Okay, so now we need a, um, we need an event to tell the 
falling particles what they have to do if they hit the surface. That's very easy to do. Just select the particles, go to end particles and where is it? Particle collision event editor. And it will open up this window. Make sure you have selected the iron particle one. Let's type in the name of it. Let's call it collision event. And here we want to emit some new particles from it. Let's go for five or six or whatever. Let's spread it a bit more. Let's go for two. And original particle dies. This looks all great and create event. Now you can see we have here a second particle here. You can put it here. And now let's have a look how this will look. Let's have a look how this will look. It look. Woohoo! And they are spreading. Nice one. This is all the magic. If you work with Arnold, you have to come to render it or you have to come to this. Uh, where is it? Let's close all this. Stop it. You need this tab here. Just tell Arnold you don't want points. You will spheres. A radius of 1 or 0.5 or whatever. But here in this tutorial we work with Redshift. So Redshift automatically interprets the points as spheres. So you have to go for a radius. Let's go here for point, point 0.5. And also we want some randomize. So radius. Point five, so now they are randomized in the in the size. We also need to do that here. Go for point yeah three because this one are the little the little spheres who are coming out of the collision. And something that I see here, I almost forget to tell it, you have on the object the rigid shape. And here you can turn on the thickness where the collision mesh is. And here you can see it's a bit bigger than your original object. So this will be fine if, if it's just the street and the camera angle is this and here's the street. No one can tell there is an offset. But in our closer look, we need to make it a bit where where's the offset? Here's the thickness. We need to make it a bit smaller. A bit smaller. Again. Ooh, it will be very small. I think this will be okay. Yeah, this will be okay. And they will collide a bit closer to the actual mesh. So let's have a look at this. And it's raining. No, it's dark. Uh, perfect. Look at this. It looks cool. Okay, so back to topic. Redshift interprets this automatically as spheres. And we did it actually. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. Yeah, we did it. The only thing we need to do is create a raindrop material. So I have here one, where I think it's this one. Yeah, it's just preset of water and apply it. If you right click on the node, you can assign material to report selection and we have some water there. And yeah, so fire up the IPR and have a look how it will look like. How many looks I say in this tutorial? Oh, it's with optics. Let's disable it or yeah, better is. Mm, please don't crash. I have sometimes a few, few issues with some RTX rendering. Hopefully 
go. It takes forever to initialize with all the displacement settings which I'm using here. So if you don't use that super crazy displacement amounts or data, it will initialize very fast. So there is no problem. Uh, here is the setting. System. XRT and this Christmas looking points here are from uh, post the fix here just ignore it they, they will go on and here you can see our bubbles they are a bit big we can do them a bit smaller uh, let's go for point 0.5 they are 0.3. Now let's have a look again. They are always big. Why? Uh, maybe this one. 0.3. Yeah, look. Now they are gone. Maybe too small. Let's wait a few seconds here. crazy how long it, it takes with all the atmosphere here. You can speed this up with disable it. Maybe for the tutorial it's not a bad idea. Here. Disable it. Maybe they are now a bit small. No, you can you can see it. I uh, almost forgot to mention here I enabled the motion blur because if we disable it they are perfect circles with no motion blur. We can also turn off all the stuff here, uh, the bouquet, so the depth of field. Let's go for a render region and here you can see the bubbles. They are looking almost as soap bubbles, or this one is very big. It's, it's close to the camera, so it will create a cool effect with the depth of field and the motion blur, but you need very high render settings, so keep that in mind. Uh, for animation, maybe you need to optimize your scene a bit, or workflow, whatever. And yeah, so this is all the magic behind. It's very simple, it's easy to set up, maybe you can save it as well as preset and reuse it every time. Um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful to you, I hope you enjoyed the video, sorry for all the ams or the have a look or whatever, and yeah, so have a nice day, bye bye!